Explore ancient Chinese wisdom through captivating stories. Our video journey unveils the timeless teachings and profound insights of sages, illustrating life's virtues and moral lessons. Dive into the rich heritage and let the sagacity of the East enlighten your path. 1. Understanding the Heart Transcends the ordinary and the sacred. The echo of the wind through the forest, the babble of water flowing through rocky crevices, silence allows one to grasp the magnificent symphony of nature between heaven and earth, the mist shrouding the grass, pristine white clouds reflecting on the water's surface, leisurely observing is to appreciate the most splendid natural masterpiece in the universe. Once, two Zen masters were traveling far from home. One day, they arrived at a riverbank just as the tide was rising. A woman, unsure how to cross, caught their attention. One of the monks took the woman's arm to help her across the river. After walking more than a mile, the other monk criticized him. You've broken the monastic rule by interacting with a woman and helping her across the river. The monk who had assisted the woman replied, In liberating all beings, why differentiate between young and old, male and female? This story illustrates that true understanding and compassion transcend conventional boundaries and distinctions, embodying the essence of universal benevolence. 2. The Importance of Self-Reliance for a ruler, the most crucial aspect is to uphold the dignity of kingship and nurture and educate the people. Forming alliances with stronger states is a temporary measure. The true strategy lies in strengthening oneself. Relying on others can lead to contempt and a need for caution. If one is viewed with contempt or caution, how can safety and security be ensured quickly? King Wen of the state of Tang asked Mencius, caught between the powerful states of Qi and Chu, how to ensure peace for his small country. Mencius replied that reliance on others offers no certainty. Pleasing Qi would anger Chu and vice versa. Such strategies are untenable. He advised focusing on fortifying the nation, deepening moats, raising walls, unifying the people, and being prepared to die defending the nation, ensuring the people would do the same. Thus, a nation is preserved through the loyalty of its people, and strength is found within, not in pleasing Qi or Chu. A ruler must fully embody the role, lovingly educating the populace. Strategies of appeasement are temporary. True strength comes from within. Mencius highlighted that depending on others for security is inherently unstable. Small states must respect larger ones, a necessary aspect of diplomacy. However, Mencius's advice aimed at King Wen's focus on appeasing the strong. True leadership involves shared fate with the people, creating unity and an indomitable spirit that deters aggression. Such unity obviates fear of others. While internal governance is essential, modern times require astute foreign relations for a nation to stand firm globally. 3. Anger blinds, calmness enlightens. In the midst of chaos and confusion, people often forget what they would typically remember during calmer times. However, in tranquil and peaceful situations, forgotten things from the past can resurface as if right before one's eyes. Thus, it's clear that clarity and confusion are entirely different states of being. Dao Daju of Chu, who served as a high official in the state of Dao, governed the state for three years without notable achievements. Despite this, his wealth tripled compared to when he started, earning him a poor reputation. His wife cautioned him, saying, Individuals with limited abilities who hold high office often meet with disaster. If one gains wealth without merit, it surely accumulates future misfortune. It's said that the leopard in the southern mountain hides in the mist for seven months without hunting. Why? It wishes to keep its fur sleek, shiny, and spotted. Thus it hides to avoid calamity. 
just as a fattened pig is slaughtered for its meat. If you continue on this path, how can you avoid disaster? Ignoring his wife's advice, Dao Daju dismissed her. A year later, he indeed met his end by execution. This story underscores the importance of maintaining a calm and clear mindset to discern right from wrong and act wisely. Anger and impulsivity cloud judgment, leading to misfortune, while tranquility fosters understanding and prudent decisions. 4. With a heart as steadfast as wood and stone, joy flows as freely as clouds and water. Individuals dedicated to cultivating their character and morality must possess a resolve as unyielding as wood and stone. Craving for fame and luxury can trap one in a cycle of material desires. Those who govern and seek to improve the world should embrace simplicity, like wandering monks. Yearning for wealth and honor can lead to perilous downfalls. During the spring and autumn and warring states periods, the state of Jin held dominion over its vassals, requiring them to pay tribute annually, though the amounts were modest. When Fan Sui assumed control of Jin's political scene, he demanded an increase in tribute from these states. The prime minister of the state of Zheng, Zi Chan, disagreed, advising Fan Sui that Jin had historically been revered for its moral integrity, leading to a prosperous and honest society. However, he noted that Jin's reputation for virtue was not well known abroad, resulting in a focus on material benefits over moral recognition. A good reputation, he argued, is the chariot of virtue and cannot be neglected. He suggested that starting with a reduction in demanded tributes could enhance Jin's moral standing globally. Fan Sui was moved by Zi Chan's words and ultimately heeded his advice. 5. Understanding the Power of Letting Go to Achieve Transcendence Letting go of the desire for fame and wealth can elevate one to transcend the ordinary. Freeing oneself from the confines of conventional morality and justice can lead one to attain sainthood. Quan Cao, a righteous and incorruptible official during the Tang Dynasty, served under the regional commander An Lushan. Aware of An Lushan's treasonous intentions and his suspicious nature, Quan Cao wished to leave but feared for his parents' safety. In the 14th year of the Tianbao era, seizing an opportunity to escort prisoners to the capital, Quan Cao visited Zhang Mo, the prefect of Fuyang, under the pretense of illness. Upon meeting, Quan Cao was so overwhelmed he could hardly speak, his gaze fixed on Zhang Mo as if in a trance. Zhang Mo, recognizing the opportunity, arranged for Quan Chao's escape by staging his death, allowing him to flee. After An Lushan's rebellion failed and Quan Chao's story came to light, many sought to employ him, but he declined all offers. Like Quan Cao, history remembers many who achieved great deeds. Some sought office, others retired after success, and some chose seclusion, demonstrating a keen understanding of their times. 6. Mastering your nature, living with ease. Life is like a puppet show. Mastering the strings of the puppet means that no thread can entangle you. You're free to pull in or stretch out, to move or rest at your own discretion, uninhibited by others' control or influence. During the reign of Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty, Kebat Haluk from the Tiel tribe in the western regions led by his parents submitted to the Tang Dynasty. Emperor Taizong appointed him as the general of the left. In 645 AD, during Taizong's campaign against the Goguryeo, Kebat Haluk was assigned as the vanguard commander. The Tang army's vanguard was besieged at the White Sheep City, and in a fierce battle, Kebat Haluk was severely wounded in the back by Goguryeo General Dabo. Emperor Taizong, who greatly admired this foreign general, personally prepared medicine for his recovery. 
Following the capture of White Sheep City and the capture of Dabo, Emperor Taizong, filled with rage, ordered K. Bat Haluk to execute Dabo as retribution. However, K. Bat Haluk said, Our initial refusal to yield was for our respective masters, and the fighting was his duty. Why bear a grudge? He sheathed his sword and spared Dabo. His magnanimity and refusal to pursue personal vengeance earned Emperor Taizong's immense praise and further esteemed him at court. This story teaches us about the importance of understanding the root of actions and maintaining broad-mindedness. By mastering our reactions and treating others with forgiveness, we can navigate life's challenges with grace and dignity, unaffected by external pressures. 7. Treating Prosperity and Adversity Equally, Forgetting Both Joy and Sorrow When a mother gives birth, she faces life-threatening dangers. Amassing wealth can attract thieves, so how can we call it purely joyful without considering the potential sorrow? Poverty cultivates frugality, and illness reminds us of the importance of maintaining health. Why then should these be deemed purely negative rather than occasions for joy? Thus, those with deep understanding treat favorable and unfavorable circumstances alike, forgetting both happiness and sorrow. When Zhuangzi's wife passed away, Hui Shi came to offer condolences and saw Zhuangzi sitting on the ground, beating a pot and singing. Hui Shi said, Your wife, who shared her life with you, bore your children, and aged alongside you, has now died. Yet you sit here singing instead of mourning. Isn't this a bit much? Zhuangzi replied, Not at all. Let me explain. Initially, I was deeply saddened by her loss, but upon reflection I realized all beings originally lack life, not just the breath of life but even form. Without form there's no breath. The emergence of breath leads to form, and the change in form leads to life. Now she has undergone another change and has died, akin to the natural transition of the seasons. She rests peacefully in the vast embrace of nature. If I were to wallow in grief, wouldn't that show a lack of understanding? Therefore, I chose not to weep. Zhuangzi's tranquility in the face of life and death comes from recognizing the essence. Where there is birth, death is inevitable. Life and death are relative, merely natural transformations. 8. The wind's trace and the moon's reflection. Here then gone. Hearing everything as if a tempest blowing through a mountain pass creates a loud echo, gone, yet leaving nothing behind. Thus, the worldly disputes fade away. The state of mind is like the moon reflecting in water, leaving no trace, achieving a level where both self and objects are forgotten. During the Warring States period, a man named Dong Quach Zi asked the renowned philosopher of the time, Zhuangzi, What, in your opinion, is the Tao? Zhuangzi replied, The Tao exists everywhere. Could you specify? In an ant, in a blade of grass, in a piece of broken pottery. Your question leads nowhere. Don't point directly at any object claiming it harbors the Tao, for there is nothing that does not embody it. The great Tao is omnipresent. Dong Kua Zai then inquired, How can one truly comprehend the Tao? Zhuangzi answered, Only when you reach a state where both self and objects are forgotten will you truly grasp the Tao. 9. Finding Serenity in the Moonlight and Cool Breezes When the clutter of thoughts clears from the heart, one feels a sense of clarity and refreshment, as if a gentle, cool breeze has swept through, making life's struggles seem distant. With a liberated spirit, the chaos of daily life fades away, eliminating the need to seek solace in the secluded wilderness. During the southern and northern dynasties, Senkin asked Bodhidharma, Can you tell me about the seal of the Buddha's mind that is transmitted from one to another? Bodhidharma replied, the seal of the Buddha cannot be obtained from others. 
Seng Khan then asked, My mind has not yet reached a state of complete peace. Please, Master, help me to calm it. Bodhidharma said, Bring me your mind, and I will set it at rest. After a long pause, Seng Khan admitted, I have searched for my mind, but cannot find it. Bodhidharma then declared, I have already put your mind at rest. The unsettled mind is a common human dilemma, leading people to endlessly search for ways to eliminate their troubles. Yet, what they often find is only more discontent. This ancient dialogue reminds us that peace comes not from external pursuits, but from realizing the inherent tranquility within our own minds. 10. The Forgetfulness Condition In a world where the nature of people oscillates between light and dark, and life's events turn topsy-turvy, bearing numerous injustices that one would rather not see, hear, or even know about, the desire to forget it all becomes overwhelming. This sentiment drove Liesi to share a tale expressing the profound frustration and sorrow he felt. In the state of song, there lived an elderly man who suddenly developed a condition of forgetfulness, forgetting in the evening what was taken in the morning and by the next day, forgetting what was given away the day before. He forgot the way when going out and forgot to sit when at home. He forgot all past actions and would later forget even the present ones. His family was deeply concerned. Consulting oracles brought no solutions. Offerings to the gods made no difference, and even medicine men could not cure him. Eventually, a scholar from the state of Lu arrived, claiming he could heal the man. The man's wife promised the scholar half their fortune if he succeeded. The scholar stated, this condition can't be divined, appeased with offerings, or cured with medicine. I will attempt to change his mindset and hopefully cure him. He then put the man through trials of cold, hunger, and darkness to which the man reacted accordingly. The scholar joyously informed the family that the condition was curable, but his method was a closely guarded secret. After seven days in isolation with the patient, the long-standing forgetfulness was miraculously cured. Once recovered, the man became irate, scolding his wife, disciplining his children, and even threatening the scholar with a spear. When asked why he was so angry, he explained, When I was forgetful, my mind was at peace, unaware of the world's existence. Now, recalling even decades-old events brings a tumult of past joys and sorrows, loves and hates, all churning within me. I fear these memories will forever clutter my mind, leaving no room for peace or forgetfulness. Commentary The complexity of human nature and the chaos of life often make us wish to erase our memories. Liazi created this story to express the deep discontent and pain in his heart. Oh, how simple and yet harsh life was in Liazi's ancient times, and how much more deceitful and wicked it has become today, leaving little to love or cherish. Thinking of life's fleeting nature pains me, a bubble in the ocean of suffering, drifting towards the shore of confusion. 11. Embracing Naturalness, Untouched by Worldly Norms Fruits and vegetables that grow wild in the forests and mountains untended by human hands and wild animals not cared for by people, still possess a wonderfully delicious essence. If we remain unaffected by the pursuit of fame and fortune, wouldn't our quality of life inherently differ from others? During the Northern Song Dynasty, there was a high-ranking official named Gu Xiang Ji who admired a refined scholar named Hua. In those times, it was customary to humbly refer to oneself by name when addressing others. However, regardless of the social standing or esteem of his company, Hua would simply refer to himself as I, leading others to call him Yi Hua. Gu Xiang Ji, having heard of Hua's reputation, held him in high esteem and went to great lengths to extend an invitation, which Hua eventually accepted. Riding a donkey to the Prime Minister's residence, 
Hua intended to enter the Grand Hall directly. The gatekeeper stopped him, stating, This is the Prime Minister's Grand Hall. All new visitors must dismount. Hua responded, I was not seeking the Prime Minister. It was he who invited me. If such formalities are required, I shall leave. And so he did not dismount and left. The gatekeeper, unable to persuade him to return, reported the incident to the Prime Minister. Gu Xiangji personally apologized and extended another invitation, but Hua declined. Deeply moved, Gu Xiangji reflected, Hua is but an ordinary man, but because he does not seek favors from others, he does not submit to power. Moreover, those who live by their principles, with a proud and noble spirit, are even less likely to succumb to authority. This story illustrates the power of maintaining one's natural disposition and principles, untouched by societal conventions or the allure of power, showcasing a life of integrity and authenticity. 12. The True Fear of Peer Rivalry Ku Yuan highlighted a profound insight. While it's natural for the weak to fear the strong, or the simple-minded to fear the wise, like dogs fear tigers, or the uncivilized fear the civilized, such fear is manageable. However, the most pervasive and genuinely terrifying fear is that of our peers and colleagues. In a story set in a scholarly gathering, an unusual participant, a fox spirit that never showed itself but engaged in stimulating conversation, shared a unique perspective. During a drinking challenge where each person had to confess their fears or face a penalty, various fears were voiced, ranging from fearing the educated and wealthy to fearing the humble and overly polite. When it was the fox spirit's turn, it simply stated, I fear fox spirits. This response elicited laughter, with others questioning how a fox spirit could fear its kind, resulting in a penalty drink. The fox spirit explained that only among our own kind do we find real fear. Siblings vie for inheritance, co-wives for attention, officials and merchants within the same circles compete for power and profit. This rivalry can lead to mutual obstruction and even sabotage. To illustrate, the spirit pointed out that hunters use species-specific bait for their traps, indicating that espionage and subterfuge often rely on turning one's own kind against each other. This story underscores the inherent danger in fearing and competing with our peers. The fear of those similar to us, whether in family, profession, or community, is profound because it's within these groups that competition is most intense. Such rivalry can lead to envy, sabotage, and even violence, highlighting a tragic aspect of human nature where people can cause immense harm to their own kind for personal gain. Reflecting on this, we're reminded that the most significant fear isn't of the unknown or the inherently powerful, but of the familiar and similar, who vie for the same goals and resources. This narrative serves as a cautionary tale about the destructive potential of internal competition and rivalry, urging us to consider a more cooperative and compassionate approach to our relations with others. Thirteen, happiness in life. It's all in the mind. The joy and sorrows of life are often perceived through the lens of personal desires and societal expectations, leading many to declare life as inherently suffering. However, they overlook the beauty of nature that surrounds us, clouds enveloping the mountains, the ceaseless flow of rivers, streams nestled closely together, flowers blooming, birds chirping melodiously, and the echo of woodcutters' songs in the valleys. All these represent the splendid scenes of our world. Life isn't purely a mundane existence, nor is it solely filled with suffering. Those who view life as a pit of despair are merely drowning themselves in worldly superficialities and sorrow. Han Shan and Shi Dei, 
renowned monks from the Tang dynasty, lived beyond the constraints of formalities, embracing a natural and relaxed lifestyle. Initially, Han Shan secluded himself 70 miles west of Tiantai County in Tongyin, adopting the name Han Shan and often visiting Guoking Temple. Wearing a bamboo leaf hat, tattered fur coat, wooden clogs, and presenting a gaunt appearance, he wandered, sometimes singing, shouting, laughing at the sky, or lost in thought. Yet, his words always carried profound philosophy. Shi Dei, an orphan raised by Feng Gan at Guoqing Temple, was affectionately called Shi Dei by the monks. He often saved leftover food and bamboo tubes for Han Shan. Together they enjoyed wine and poetry, their gestures exuding freedom and contentment. Later the regional historian of Daizhou, Lu Chao Dun, learned from Feng Gan about these two intriguing figures. Upon visiting Guoqing Temple and witnessing their modest demeanor, he respectfully bowed. The two, laughing heartily, held hands and left the temple with Han Shan. Lu Chiao Dun later sought Han Shan, offering clothes, medicine, and necessities. They retreated deeper into the ravines, eventually disappearing without a trace. Unbound by the pursuit of fame and wealth, their actions were liberating, finding joy in hardship, and truly understanding the essence of life and human existence. 14. The mind shapes and destroys perceptions. A person prone to overthinking may mistake the shadow of a bow in a glass of water for a venomous snake, or see a rock in the grass as a lurking tiger filled with malice. Yet, when desires and fears settle, the same menacing rock can transform into a gentle seagull, and the loud croaking of frogs turn into a soothing symphony, making everything seen in the moment genuinely fascinating. In the year 383 AD, after unifying the north, Fujian, the emperor of the former Qin dynasty, compelled the northern population into forming an army of 870,000 to march south, determined to annihilate the Eastern Jin once and for all. The Eastern Jin deployed General Shi Xuan with an army of 80,000 to face the invasion. As the battle commenced, the Jin's vanguard decimated Qin forces at the Battle of Fei River and faced Qin's advance troops across the river. Climbing atop the Shuyang Fort, now in Anhui's Shu County, Fujian mistook the neatly arranged trees on the distant mountain some eight miles away for Jin troops. Fearful, he exclaimed, how can we say the Jin army is small when their forces appear so vast? This misperception led to a catastrophic defeat for the Qin forces, with the Jin capitalizing on their victory to launch a counterattack. The Qin army retreated in disarray, trampling over each other in the wilderness and suffering massive casualties. The survivors, fleeing amidst howling winds and the cries of cranes, mistook these sounds for the pursuing Jin army's war cries, instilling fear that prevented them from stopping. Thus, the once mighty Qin army was decimated, and it wasn't long before the dynasty collapsed. This story serves as a reminder of how perceptions, often shaped and destroyed by the mind, can lead to one's downfall. It underscores the importance of clear vision and the dangers of letting fear and imagination cloud judgment. 15. Recognizing True Nature Over Zen, individuals with an innately pure disposition live simply eating when hungry and drinking when thirsty to maintain their health. However, those with chaotic and unclear minds, even if they engage in Buddhist scripture, end up wasting their energy. During the Warring States period in the state of Zhao, there was a renowned veteran general named Zhao She. His son, Zhao Kuo, was exceptionally intelligent and studious from a young age, with a particular interest in military strategy. He studied numerous military texts, memorizing them thoroughly. Whenever discussing military tactics and strategies, 
he could effortlessly quote from these texts, captivating many with his eloquence. His growing reputation inflated his ego, leading him to arrogantly claim, warfare is simple, hardly a serious matter. Hearing this, Zhao Xi lamented, someone with a deluded heart despite talking about Buddha or Zen will fail to grasp Buddha's teachings. Similarly, a braggart, even if versed in military theories and claiming proficiency in strategic doctrines, will never be able to lead troops effectively. If Zhao Kuo were to lead our armies, Zhao's downfall would be inevitable. Indeed, years later when the state of Qin attacked Zhao, King Zhao appointed Zhao Kuo as a general. As his father predicted, Zhao Kuo's lack of genuine skill coupled with his impulsive desire for quick glory, led to a disastrous defeat against the Qin army. This story illustrates the importance of understanding one's true nature over superficial claims of enlightenment or expertise. Real wisdom and capability cannot be faked and have profound implications, especially in leadership in critical situations. 16. Harmonious spirit, a pure heart. Harboring kind and benevolent thoughts can become a warm and gentle breath between heaven and earth. A pure and clean soul can leave a lasting fragrance for generations to come. The first wife of Trin Van Ku from the Eastern Han Dynasty bore him four sons. His later wife, Kui Mu Kuang, also had two sons. After Trin Van Ku's passing, the four sons from his first wife showed no respect for their stepmother, often making life difficult for her. However, Kwai Ma Kwong treated them with immense kindness and gentleness, and her sons, living afar, provided for them. Despite advice to separate from these four, she stated, I want to use virtue to influence them, not to lead them down a path of corruption. When the eldest son from the first wife became seriously ill, Kwai Ma Kuang, deeply saddened, personally prepared meals and medicines for him, attending to every need. His prolonged illness eventually healed, and he told his brothers, Our stepmother's kindness and we've been indifferent to her care, worse than beasts. Yet she never resented us and treated us even better, making our faults unforgivable. Consequently, the four brothers pleaded for punishment at the local prison. The district officials praised Kwai Ma Kuang and allowed the sons to repent and reform. Under her strict guidance, each son later achieved significant accomplishments. This story illustrates the profound significance of harmony in culture. A cheerful and gentle demeanor can cultivate oneself manage a household, and bring about peace, paving the way to a brighter future. 17. Harmony and purity, the key to a clear heart. When the heart is empty of malice and the mind is at peace, one's true nature reveals itself. Trying to find one's true essence without inner calm is as futile as stirring water to catch the moon's reflection. You'll only grasp emptiness. Maintaining a pure and clear soul brings tranquility. If you can't see through the existing thoughts while yearning for peace of mind, it's like adding another layer of dust to an already dusty mirror. During the spring and autumn period, a man named Yang Ju stayed in a lodge in the state of Song. The lodge owner had two wives, one stunningly beautiful and the other quite plain. Surprisingly, the owner favored the plain wife over the beautiful one. Curious, Yang Zhu inquired why. The owner explained, The proud beauty, though physically attractive, does not appeal to me. My plain wife, on the other hand, remains composed through every situation, never allowing her appearance to spark jealousy or resentment. Her ability to cast aside dark thoughts illuminates a beauty of kindness and peace in her demeanor. To me, she is not unattractive at all. Yang Zhu remarked, Students, take note. A pure heart naturally reveals a person's true essence, and such individuals are respected everywhere they go. 
18. Cultivating flowers and bamboo, embracing a selfless state of mind, reducing the pursuit of fame and profit, nurturing life through the joys of gardening, letting all worries drift into the void. It's advisable to let go of life's trivial concerns, light some incense, brew a pot of fine tea, and not even bother to ask about the identity of the child in white. Dao Yuan Ming, a great poet of the Eastern Jin Dynasty, planted five willow trees in front of his house and dubbed himself Mr. Five Willows. He penned verses stating, Mr. Five Willows knows not where he comes from nor his own name. By his house stand five willow trees, thus his given name. He lives in serene quietude, speaks little, and seeks not fame or fortune. During his retreat, Dao found joy in bonding with plants, birds chirping, and was utterly content. In May and June, he often slept by the north gate, enjoying the cool breeze and leisure, just like the revered sages of old. Dao Yuanming was fond of wine but too poor to indulge regularly. One year, during the Double Ninth Festival, without wine to celebrate, he sat by chrysanthemums, inhaling their fragrance. Then, from afar, he saw an official in white approaching. Indeed, it was Wang Hong, the regional governor of Zhangzhou, sending wine. Overwhelmed with joy, Dao Yuanming drank heartily until drunk, then staggered home. This story reflects the ancient wisdom of finding peace and contentment in simple pleasures, fostering a connection with nature, and living beyond the grasp of material desires, emulating the tranquil and untroubled life of past sages. 19. A world amidst the clouds, the universe in tranquility, standing beneath the bamboo fence, suddenly hearing the rooster crow and dogs bark, one might feel as though they're living in a fairy tale world, Sitting in a study and suddenly hearing the cicadas and crows, one realizes the infinite depth hidden within silence. Zhang Dai, a renowned scholar from the late Ming and early Qing dynasties, was a tea connoisseur who often used tea to forge friendships. Once he visited another scholar, Wen Yan Shui, who, upon seeing Zhang Dai, asked, What brings you here? Zhang Dai responded, I've long heard of your great reputation, and I simply cannot leave today without tasting your tea. Delighted, Wen Yanshui personally prepared the tea. The tea, shimmering under the lamp's light with an intoxicating aroma, earned Zhang Dai's praise. He guessed it to be from the La Jiao region, prepared in the Long Yuan style. Wen Yanshui was astonished by Zhang Dai's deep understanding of tea. However, when it came to the water used for the tea, Zhang Dai couldn't pinpoint its source. Wen Yanshui revealed it was from the Hui Spring, exceptionally unique, drawn from a well and collected at night when a fresh stream emerges, immediately collected into a pot. Later, Wen Yanshui offered another pot of tea for tasting. After sipping, Zhang Dai remarked, This pot has a richer aroma, surely it's a spring tea. The previous must have been an autumn tea, right? Wen Yanshui laughed heartily. I am 70 years old and have never met anyone as knowledgeable about tea as you. Indeed, even within a single pot of tea, one can discover profound mysteries. 20. Serenity Reveals Reality Simplicity Unveils Essence In moments of calm, the true nature of life becomes visible. It is in simplicity that the essence of one's character can be truly felt. Su Shi, a celebrated poet from the Northern Song Dynasty, known for his profound poetry, was once exiled to Huangzhu for offending the aristocracy. One evening, as he struggled with sleeplessness, he was captivated by the bright moonlight that made the night as clear as day, dispelling his urge to sleep. He visited the Tui Thien Temple to meet his friend, Truong Hawaii Dan, and together they strolled under the moonlight in the courtyard. The moon's reflection on the ground 
mingled with the shadows of bamboo, created a scene of tranquil beauty. Truong Huai Dan, also exiled to Huangzhou, shared this moment of serenity with Su Shi, leading Su to reflect. What courtyard does not have its moon? What place does not have its bamboo? Yet few can share this idle moment as we do. From this realization sprang a sense of liberation from worldly concerns. In this moment, Su Shi shed the burdens of his exile, embracing a state of calm contentment, truly achieving a sense of joy in life, and becoming one with the world around him. 21. Seeing one's true nature leads to enlightenment. Being shackled by material desires can make our lives feel profoundly sorrowful. It is only in moments of serene clarity that we find life to be truly delightful and precious. Understanding this is sadly profound. Worldly attachments that we once clung to dissolve away, and recognizing this is genuinely valuable. This realization allows one to achieve a divine state of enlightenment effortlessly. Lu Wenshu, an editor during the Qing dynasty, passed the imperial examination during the Qianlong Emperor's reign and was appointed as the educational head in Hunan. Later, he taught in Jiangji for over 20 years. Lu Wenshu dedicated himself to editing books, working diligently from dawn when the first light of day was barely visible, flipping through pages to edit, grinding his ink diligently in a room filled to the brim with books, leaving hardly any space for even a teapot. As dusk fell, he would leave his study for a walk in the garden, then light his lamp to continue his work well into the night. Year-round, from the cold of winter to the heat of summer, Lou tirelessly edited books for a decade, leaving behind no worldly possessions, only his vast collection of books. 22. Reducing illusory desires, cultivating a deeper spiritual heart. Desire burns like fire, but when one contemplates the sickness that might follow, fervent passion turns to ashes. Fame and wealth taste sweet as honey, yet thinking of dying for material wealth renders the pursuit of fame and fortune as tasteless as wax. Therefore, by constantly reflecting on illness and death, one can eliminate the chase after illusions and nurture a spirit inclined towards enlightenment. During the Tang Dynasty, Monk Tong Nian once asked Zen Master Pu Yuan, What is the Tao? Pu Yuan replied, The ordinary mind is the Tao. Tong Nian asked, Can the Tao be approached through cognition and practice? Pu Yuan answered, the moment you entertain the thought of cognition and practice, you stray from the true Tao. Tong Nian further inquired, If we do not engage in cognition and practice, how can we know it is the Tao? Pu Yuan explained, The true Tao cannot be confined within the realms of knowledge and explanation, nor does it belong to the realms of the unknowable and inexplicable. If one reaches the state of the true Tao, it is like the vast void, boundless. How can one speak of the Tao in terms of is and is not? Through this, Tong Nian attained sudden enlightenment in Zen philosophy. 23. Returning to nature, recalling the past. Rather than befriending ordinary folks in the bustling streets, it's more enriching to connect with an old sage living in a secluded mountain cave. Visiting influential and noble individuals pales in comparison to the warmth of interacting with the common people living around us. Listening to gossip at the market's end is less fulfilling than hearing the distant songs of woodcutters echoing through the forests. Discussing the random acts and proper deeds of contemporary society is not as enlightening as reflecting on the virtuous words and actions of the ancient sages. Tao Yuan Ming, a poet from the Northern Song Dynasty known for his bold and ambitious character, held a governmental position where he enforced the law strictly, unafraid of the powerful. 
He was beloved by the people for his stern punishment of arrogant and unruly officials within his jurisdiction. Tao Yuanming enjoyed drinking and reading, making wine his companion during his evening studies at his brother-in-law, Du Dian's house, a high official of the Northern Song. Once, Du Dian secretly observed Tao Yuanming reading The Records of the Grand Historian, the biography of Zhang Liang. When Tao reached the part where Zhang Liang attempts to assassinate the Emperor of Qin, he clapped his hands, lamenting, What a pity! He missed! and took a drink. Further reading, The Records, The House of Liu Bang, he slammed the table at the meeting of Zhang Liang and Liu Bang, exclaiming, Such a rare moment for a lord and his subject to meet, and emptied his glass. Du Dian, amused, entered and remarked, With such delightful accompaniments to your drink, a pot is hardly enough. From then on, Tao Yuanming's habit of pairing the records of the grand historian with his drinks became a legendary anecdote. Comparatively, some indulge in spreading rumors and commenting on others, leading to disputes. It's better, like Tao Yuanming, to immerse oneself in historical texts, embracing the expansiveness of the ancients. 24. The Hazards of Idle Minds and the Perils of Busy Ones In moments of leisure and idleness, it's easy for one's mind to drift into a state of confusion and disorientation. During such times, it's crucial to maintain sharpness and tranquility. Conversely, when swamped with tasks and rushing around, one might become irritable and restless, necessitating a calm demeanor amidst agility. During the Warring States period, there was a man named Meng Chang Jun who supported over 3,000 guests in his household. Among them was Feng Xuan, a talented individual whom Meng Chang Jun assigned to collect debts in the city of Tian. Upon arrival, instead of collecting debts, Feng Xuan burned the debt records and informed the citizens that Meng Chang Jun had graciously forgiven their debts. The people of Tiet were deeply grateful. Later, when King of Qi found an excuse to exile Meng Chang Jun, he had to return to his domain in Tiet, only to be warmly welcomed by the citizens there. It was then that he realized Feng Xuan's earlier act of burning the debt records was a profoundly strategic move with far-reaching vision aimed at preventing future misfortune. In everyday life, having the foresight to navigate situations wisely can turn danger into safety and misfortune into blessing. 25. Declining the fish. Serving as an official like Kong and Gi Hu was truly an embodiment of integrity. Even when it came to something as trivial as a fish, he deliberated and refused to accept it. He understood the principle that being indulged by others is temporary, and cannot compare to valuing oneself, which is a strategy for long-term respect. Kong Ungi Hu, a general in the state of Lu, had a fondness for fish. One day, someone brought him a fish as a gift, but he refused it. His brother found this odd and asked, You enjoy eating fish, so why won't you accept it when someone offers it to you? Kong Ungi Hu explained, the person offering the fish surely wants a favor in return. If I accept it, I'd feel obliged to help them. Helping them could lead to breaking the law, which might result in losing my position. And without my position, not only would I stop receiving gifted fish, but I wouldn't be able to afford fish on my own either. Therefore, by not accepting the fish, I'm ensuring I can continue to enjoy fish in the long run. Lao Tzu once said, Put yourself last, and you will come first. Put yourself outside, and you will be preserved. Isn't it true that by not pursuing personal gains, one can ultimately fulfill their desires? This story highlights the virtues of self-discipline and foresight in maintaining one's integrity and the wisdom in considering the long-term consequences of one's actions. 26. 
Mundane differences are insignificant. In the eyes of the mundane, everything in heaven and earth, human relationships and world affairs appear distinct. However, viewed through a transcendent perspective, all these matters are fundamentally the same. What's there to differentiate or choose from? Tai Ying, a scholar and renowned calligrapher during the Eastern Han Dynasty, was a person of profound intellect. Living during the era of Emperor Ling, Tai Ying was invited by a neighbor to a wine gathering. Busy with work, he forgot the time and arrived late to find the party in full swing with lively music adding to the atmosphere. Tai Ying, moving to an adjacent room, silently appreciated the music, astounded by a melancholic tone suggesting doom. Sensing something amiss, he quietly left. The host was informed of Tai Ying's brief visit and hurried after him, requesting his return to discuss the matter. Tai Ying shared his impressions honestly. The musician explained, While playing, I noticed a cricket approaching a cicada from a dark corner. The cicada flew away and the cricket hesitated. My mind was captured by this scene, fearing the cricket missed its chance. Could such thoughts have influenced my music? Tai Ying laughed, noting, The musician's heartfelt emotions and the music resonated, leading to this misunderstanding. Tai Ying's ability to sense a deadly aura in the music, demonstrating his exceptional insight and understanding, indeed marks him as a person of significant wisdom and extraordinary perception. 27. Embracing Simplicity and Contentment Fishing is inherently a leisurely and relaxing activity, yet it holds the power of life and death. Similarly, playing chess is a light-hearted pastime that also involves deep strategic thinking and a desire to win. Therefore, doing less rather than more can lead to greater ease and contentment in life, embracing simplicity over complexity to preserve one's true nature. During the Jin Dynasty, there were three brothers named Chu Kai, Chu Tung, and Chu Pak, raised by their kind and gentle mother. After losing their father in tumultuous times, the family moved from the north to the south, where the mother single-handedly raised her sons to be honorable men. Deeply appreciating their mother's sacrifices, the brothers were extremely respectful towards her. One winter evening, as their mother poured them each a glass of wine, she tearfully expressed her hope to rely on them for the rest of her life. At this, Chu Tung, placing his wine on the table and kneeling before their mother, began to cry. Surprised, their mother asked why he was upset. He explained, You mentioned relying on us for your later years, but Chu Kai and I are prone to competitiveness and showing off our talents, risking our lives in the process. Only our brother Chu Pak, with his calm and gentle nature, is unlikely to invite disaster upon himself. Thus, he may be the only one capable of taking care of you until the end. Indeed, Chu Kai and Chu Tung were eventually killed due to their ambitious nature. Consequently, the duty of caring for their aging mother fell solely on Chu Fak. This story highlights the value of simplicity, humility, and the peace found in living a life unburdened by the constant need to prove oneself. In embracing the essence of doing less and prioritizing harmony and contentment, one can ensure a fulfilling and serene existence. 28. The Peace of Desirelessness, Contentment in Simplicity A soul free from the craving for fame, fortune, and material desires is as clear and vast as the autumn sky and the endless serene ocean. Finding companionship in music and books during leisure time is akin to living a carefree, ethereal existence deep within a mystical mountain retreat. The writer, philosopher, and musician from the Wei Dynasty during the Three Kingdoms era, Ji Kang, is a prime example. 
With familial connections to the Wei nobility through his ancestors, Ji Kang held a significant position in the court as a senior official, known to many as Ji Zhongtan. Born into a scholarly family, his true passion lay in the teachings of Laozi and Zhuangzi, favoring naturalism over Confucian rites and rituals. Disenchanted with the prevailing political figure, Sima Zhao, he abandoned his official duties to lead a simple life as a blacksmith. His days were filled with wine, music, poetry, and reading, embodying the life of an immortal. One day, the strategist Zhang Hui, a trusted confidant of Sima Zhao, visited Ji Kong. Despite recognizing his visitor, Ji Kong continued to work on his anvil without observing any formalities. His indifference to fame and fortune was evident, showcasing a profound contentment with his existence, free from worldly desires and ambitions. 29. Wealth as fleeting as clouds, drunkenness in poetry. One can regard wealth as fleeting clouds without needing to retreat into caves for meditation and character cultivation. Those indifferent to the beauty of mountains and rivers yet drawn to the arts, composing poetry and indulging in wine, are merely chasing vanity. The Wei Dynasty scholar and thinker Nguyen Tich, with aspirations to aid the world, was born during a tumultuous period between the Wei and the Western Jin dynasties when chaos reigned, and few distinguished scholars could preserve their lives. Thus, Nguyen Tich chose not to engage in political affairs, often seeking solace in wine and song to safeguard his life. Emperor Wen of Jin, Sima Zhao, once desired to betroth Nguyen Tich's daughter to Emperor Wu, Sima Yan. Nguyen Tich, immersed in drunken revelry for 60 days, gave Sima Zhao no chance to propose, forcing him to abandon the idea. The Wei minister, Zhang Hui, repeatedly inquired about his political opinions, intending to use Nguyen Tich's comments as grounds for accusation. Nguyen Tich cleverly remained perpetually intoxicated to avoid calamity. Although holding an official position, Nguyen Tich stayed aloof from political discussions, expressing his feelings through poetry and wine, living as a hermit within the city. 30. The nurturing spring breeze versus the harsh northern wind. A person with a generous and tolerant heart is like a warm spring breeze that nourishes all living things. Just as plants thrive under the care of the spring wind, so too do people flourish under the influence of kindness and compassion. In contrast, a person with a harsh and merciless nature is like the cold northern wind, whose chill freezes and withers all it touches, leading to desolation and death. Han and Guo of the Western Han Dynasty, who from a young age studied Han Fei Zi and various schools of thought and served the King of Liang as a trusted advisor, experienced this dichotomy firsthand. After being imprisoned due to official matters, the prison warden, Dian Jia, subjected him to humiliation and abuse. Han An Guo remarked, can't ashes catch fire again? Dian Jia mocked him, saying, If ashes can reignite, I'll extinguish them with my urine. Later, when the king of Liang sought to reinstate Han and Guo due to a lack of capable officials, Dian Jia was terrified and fled into the wilderness. Han and Guo declared, If Dian Jia ceases to be an official, his family line will be eradicated. With no other choice, Dian Jia returned to face his punishment. Han An Guo, however, said with a smile, Today you may urinate, but a person as petty as you is not worth seeking revenge upon. Dian Jia was deeply ashamed and could no longer face anyone. This story illustrates the power of tolerance and generosity. Sometimes, Showing forgiveness and understanding can have a transformative effect on others, far exceeding the impact of threats, punishment, or physical force. It fosters a willingness to admire those with talent and virtue and to reflect and repent for past wrongdoings. 31. 
preserving integrity and leaving a legacy for the world. It's better for people to live maintaining their natural integrity, casting aside any cunning or deceitful intelligence and keeping their essence pure, returning to nature's simplicity. It's preferable to resist the temptations of glamour and luxury, content with a simple and serene life, thereby preserving a clean reputation in the world. During his tenure, a famous official from the Northern Song Dynasty greatly benefited the people through his expertise in handling cases with fairness, unafraid of power. Known to all, from the young to the elderly as Bao Zheng, he is celebrated in Chinese history for his incorruptibility. He strictly adhered to the law, famously presenting six memorials outlining the crimes of Zhang Yaozuo, the uncle of Emperor Huizong's favorite consort who was promoted against regulations. Any legal missteps within the empire inevitably caught his attention. Towards the end of his life, he erected a stone tablet in his home inscribed with family instructions on integrity, declaring that any descendant accepting bribes would not be considered part of his lineage. His story is forever remembered, and his legacy of integrity and moral character is passed down through generations. 32. Self-observation reveals true desires and tranquility. In the quiet of the night, sitting silently and delving deep into one's soul, one initially may not recognize any dark thoughts. Instead, the true essence of their character surfaces, granting insights into the meaning of life. However, this realization that the true nature revealed is only temporary leads to the understanding that dark thoughts persist, which brings about a sense of deep shame. During the Warring States period, the So State General, Sun Shu Ao, recognized Yu Man as a kind and talented individual. As Sun Shu Ao was on his deathbed, he advised his son that if he ever found himself in dire straits, he should seek out Yu Man and tell him he was Sun Shu Ao's son. Years later, fallen on hard times and reduced to gathering firewood for survival, the son encountered Yu Man and relayed his father's message. At a banquet hosted by King So, Yu Man, impersonating Sun Shu Ao, stepped forward to offer a toast, startling the king into thinking Sun Shu Ao had come back to life and intended to appoint him as a general. Yu Man declined, saying, Sun Shu Ao served as So's general, loyally dedicating his life to the nation, allowing the So king to reign supreme among the feudal lords. Now, after his illness and death, his son finds no refuge, much like Sun Shu Ao's fate. It would have been better to have ended it all from the start. Deeply moved, King So granted Sun Shu Ao's son land sufficient for 400 households. Yu Man's impersonation of Sun Shu Ao endeared him to the king, yet his aim was solely to liberate Sun Shu Ao's son from misery. In this, Yu Man harbored no thoughts of personal gain. 33. Illegitimate Gains – The Root of Downfall Illegitimate gains, not rightfully one's own, continue to seduce, either as a divine test or as traps laid by others. Without foresight, many find it hard to escape this noose. Governor Lu Jiang, Yang Su, upon taking office during the Eastern Han Dynasty, faced a prevalent custom of gifting at the administrative door. Determined to eradicate this corrupt practice, he refused a subordinate's gift of fish multiple times. Unyielded, he hung the fish under the eaves until the sun spoiled and dried it. Yang Su's exemplary leadership significantly reduced the ingrained tradition of gifting in Lu Jiang. To resist or eliminate the intricate networks of bribery, one must act like Yang Su, embodying integrity and non-greed, with a firm resolve to dismantle opaque relationships and never indulge in ill-gotten benefits. 34. The rich should give generously. The wise shouldn't boast. Wealthy individuals should act with compassion and generosity. 
Harshness or miserliness, even amidst wealth, renders one's behavior no different from that of the ignorant poor. How can true joy and happiness be fully enjoyed then? Similarly, those endowed with intelligence and talent should exhibit humility, keeping their abilities discreet. Boasting only equates their intelligence with folly, inevitably leading to failure. During the spring and autumn and warring states periods, Duke Wen of Wei was known for his benevolent rule, treating everyone with sincerity, regardless of their social standing. Hearing of the hermit Don Can Mok, who lived a simple life in Tai Ha, unswayed by material gain, the Duke personally sought him out. Riding in his grand chariot amidst a noisy procession, the Duke approached Don Can Mok's home and knocked on the door himself, only to find that Mok had hidden away. The following morning, Duke Wen left his carriage at the village's edge and walked to Mok's home, yet Mok still avoided meeting him. Duke Wen lamented, truly a noble hermit who seeks not fame or fortune. Persistently, for a month, Duke Wen visited daily. Eventually, moved by the Duke's sincerity, Mok agreed to meet. Duke Wen welcomed him back to the capital, treating him with the utmost respect and honor. News of this spread, attracting sages from across the lands to seek refuge under Duke Wen's patronage, significantly enriching his court with talent. 35. Bias harms, intelligence obstructs. Gaining fame or indulging in desires doesn't necessarily corrupt one's character. It's rigid biases, holding on to one's own beliefs as absolute, that can damage the soul. It's not entirely the pursuit of beauty or pleasure that impacts a person's moral fiber, but rather thinking oneself superior and dismissing others that stands as a barrier to ethical conduct. During the Qin Dynasty, Prime Minister Li Si fell victim to the treachery of Zhao Gao. Under brutal torture, Li Si was forced to falsely confess. Despite his ordeal, Li Si clung to the belief in his own cleverness, thinking his written defense would exonerate him with the second emperor of Qin. When the defense was presented, Zhao Gao concealed it, preventing the emperor from seeing it and further subjecting Li Si to cruel beatings to ensure his silence. The emperor, without seeking the truth himself, readily believed Zhao Gao's biased accounts. Delighted with Zhao Gao's report, he exclaimed, Without Master Zhao, I would have been deceived by Li Si, leading to Li Si's execution and public humiliation. Trusting and following Zhao Gao blindly, the emperor too met a tragic end at Zhao's hands. Indeed, intelligence can be one's downfall and biases can harm others. The saying, intelligence obstructs the path, rings true. 36. Subduing demons from within, the power of self-control and calmness. To persuade those with malevolent intentions, one must first conquer the malignant thoughts within their own soul. By purging all wicked thoughts from the mind, malevolent spirits will naturally dissipate. To control actions that defy morality and discipline, one must first master their own impulsive anger. By restraining one's own volatile emotions, deceptive external circumstances will not be able to infiltrate. During the spring and autumn period, Confucius frequently led his disciples on journeys through the vassal states to advocate his political philosophy, hoping for adoption by these states. On a visit to the state of Wei, Confucius left for the state of Chen due to being undervalued by Duke Ling of Wei. Upon reaching Chen, they ran out of provisions, and everyone with Confucius faced hunger, with some falling ill and unable to continue. Tzu Lu, in a burst of anger, confronted Confucius, asking, Can a gentleman also face such extreme hardship? Confucius replied, A gentleman can control his anger and subdue the evil thoughts within his heart, finding contentment in adversity, whereas a petty person, when faced with hardship, is dominated by those evil thoughts, capable of any deed.
This story underscores the importance of self-control and inner calm in overcoming external challenges and maintaining one's moral compass, even in times of dire adversity. 37. The Gentleman's Path to Avoiding Misfortune, Caution in the Unseen A wise man once noted that to avoid disaster, one must refrain from committing errors that go unnoticed. Similar to how liver issues manifest through vision problems and kidney troubles through hearing issues, symptoms might not always be visible to others, but their effects surely will be. Therefore, a truly virtuous gentleman, to prevent exposing his faults in broad daylight, must first avoid making undetectable mistakes in minor details. During the tumultuous spring and autumn and warring states periods, the state of Chu presented a turtle as a tribute to Duke Ling of the state of Zheng. At that time, the powerful minister Zi Gong sought an audience with Duke Ling. Upon seeing the turtle, Zi Gong gestured to his companions, remarking, Someday, a mere snap of my fingers could allow me to taste this delicacy. Later, as the kitchen prepared to cook the turtle, Zi Gong laughed out loud. Inquiring about the laughter, Zi Gong recounted the incident to Duke Ling. When the time came to eat the turtle, Duke Ling summoned Zi Gong but excluded him from the meal. Angered, Zi Gong dipped his finger into the pot for a taste before leaving. Feeling humiliated by Duke Ling's deliberate provocation, Zi Gong harbored a grudge that eventually led to Duke Ling's assassination. This tragic outcome stemmed from a seemingly trivial oversight by Duke Ling. This tale serves as a poignant reminder that even minor missteps, particularly those unseen or seemingly insignificant, can have profound consequences. A gentleman, therefore, must exercise caution and integrity, even in the smallest of actions, to navigate life's complexities without inviting disaster. 38. Honor and wealth stem from virtue. Status, reputation, and wealth in this world, if gained through the promotion of virtue and self-improvement, are like wildflowers that flourish across mountains and hills, naturally growing strong and prosperous endlessly. However, if achieved through cunning or violence, they are like cut flowers placed in a vase. Lacking roots, they quickly wither and die. During the Three Kingdoms period, there was a man named Guan Ning who lived reclusively in the deep mountains. There, a single well made fetching water difficult, leading to conflicts and even fights among the locals. Distressed by this, Guan Ning personally bought numerous water barrels, filling them with water and leaving them by the well for others to use. The locals were astonished by this act. Once they learned of his deeds, they reflected on their actions, leading to a peaceful coexistence. From then on, the community around the well lived in harmony. On one occasion, a neighbor's ox trampled on Guan Ning's field, ruining the seedlings. Instead of chasing the ox away, fearing it might fall prey to predators without a shepherd, he instructed his servants to lead it to a shaded area for water and grazing, caring for it more meticulously than its own owner. The ox's owner, upon finding his animal not only unharmed but well attended to, felt deeply remorseful and immensely grateful. Through his kindness, patience, and forbearance, Guan Ning inspired his neighbors to embody higher moral values. 39. Repairing the Roof Before the rain, the value of preparation. In times of leisure, one shouldn't let time pass idly. Instead, utilize it to prepare for things that might be needed when life becomes hectic. During calm periods, don't allow your mind to be empty, as being mentally prepared makes adapting to changes effortless and natural. When unnoticed, refrain from indulging in deceitful acts, as respect naturally comes in the presence of others. During the spring and autumn period, Guan Zhang, Bao Shuya, and Zhao Shuo were three close friends, 
all eminent ministers of the state of Qi. While deliberating on Qi's succession, Zhao Shuo proposed supporting Prince Zhu for the throne, suggesting they all back him. However, Guan Zhong pointed out that Qi had two princes, Prince Zhu and Prince Xiao Bai. Though Prince Zhu had his mother's backing, the public despised them. In contrast, Prince Xiao Bai, who lost his mother early, garnered sympathy. Deciding Qi's heir was challenging, so Guan Zhong recommended Bao Shuya support Prince Xiao Bai, while he and Zhao Shuo would back Prince Zhu. Eventually, Prince Xiao Bai assassinated Prince Zhu and ascended the throne, even seeking Guan Zhong's life. Fortunately, Bao Shuya's support saved Guan Zhong, who not only survived but was appointed as the prime minister. After careful consideration, Guan Zhong's strategy exemplified prudent precaution and foresight, avoiding disaster. Had they all supported Prince Zhu without considering Prince Xiao Bai, navigating the subsequent political landscape would not have been as manageable. Preparing in leisure for busy times and thoughtful planning during calm for chaos ensure safety from misfortune. Guan Zhong and his friends, through their honesty and openness, achieved esteemed positions. This narrative underscores the importance of anticipation and preparation in avoiding calamities and the strength found in transparency and mutual support among allies. 40. Integrity broadens your path, desire narrows it. Pursuing a righteous and straight path naturally feels vast and expansive, allowing your soul to feel clear and open through dedicated effort. In contrast, following a path of wrongdoing and personal desire is incredibly constricting. Once entangled, you realize it's filled with insurmountable obstacles, making progress difficult. During the spring and autumn and warring states periods, Confucius's student Zi Gong passed through Han and observed an old man laboriously watering his garden with a large jug. The effort was immense, yet the watering process was slow. Zi Gong suggested, using a machine to water could irrigate a hundred plots in a day with minimal effort and high efficiency. Why not use one? The old man, looking up, inquired about the machine. Zi Gong explained, it's made from wood, heavy at the back and light at the front, allowing for quick water drawing and efficient well pumping. It's called a water lever. The old man's expression changed as he replied, I've heard my teacher say that those who use machines will resort to clever tricks, and those inclined to trickery will harbor deceitful thoughts. With deceitful thoughts, one cannot maintain purity of heart. A clouded heart leads to an unsettled spirit, and with an unsettled spirit, one is prone to abandon righteousness. It's not that I'm unaware of the water lever. I'm simply ashamed to use it. Zi Gong felt deeply ashamed and was left speechless, bowing his head in silence. This tale highlights the importance of maintaining integrity and the pitfalls of succumbing to convenience at the expense of one's moral compass. 41. The Importance of Integrity If the heart is just, external enemies cannot prevail. Hearing sweet words, seeing beautiful sights, and being attracted to the alluring aspects of the external world are like invaders and agents from outside. Emotions and desires within one's heart are the hidden enemies within. Maintaining a vigilant and upright spirit, resisting temptations, and keeping an inner purity transforms these perceptions and psychological traps into valuable allies, aiding in the cultivation of moral integrity. Wen Tianxiang, a revered scholar of the Southern Song Dynasty and the last prime minister of his era, came from a privileged background. In 1275, as the Mongol forces launched a comprehensive assault on the Southern Song, breaking through the Yangtze River defenses, the imperial court called for a nationwide mobilization against the Mongol army. 
When Tian Xiang promptly donated his family's wealth to the military effort, recruited local heroes, and formed an army of over 10,000 to march towards Lin An. His negotiations with the Mongol camp led to his capture, and despite being forced to kneel before the Mongol commander, Wen Tianxiang resisted, struggling to sit on the ground instead, refusing to surrender and proclaiming his willingness to die for justice, fearing no imprisonment. He was detained for three years. In prison, he received a letter from his daughter, Liu Yang, learning his wife and daughters were enslaved in the palace, living as criminals. Deeply understanding his daughter's letter as the Yuan dynasty's insinuation, that surrender would reunite his family, Wen Tianxiang, despite the excruciating pain, refused to betray his principles for his family's sake. Led to the execution ground, he inquired, which way is south? Directed accordingly, he knelt towards the south, declared, my deeds are concluded with no shame in my heart, and calmly accepted his execution, sacrificing himself with serene resolve. 42. Cultivating Virtue, the Pitfall of Imbalance The demeanor of a person should be lofty and open-minded, yet not excessively unrestrained or frivolous. Thought processes must be cautious and meticulous, but not petty or chaotic. Interests should be refined and modest, yet not overly simplistic or dull. Integrity must be strict and upright, but not stubborn or inflexible. In the late Qin dynasty, Xiang Yu, the king of western Chu, led a peasant army in a rebellion that shook and eventually shattered the brutal rule of the Qin, becoming a hero revered by all. However, when Xiang Yu broke through the encirclement at Gaixia, pursued by thousands of Han soldiers to a dead end, and realizing his escape was impossible, he remained arrogantly self-assured. Expressing his emotions to his subordinates, he reminisced and boasted about his remarkable victories and undefeated battles over eight years. Xiang Yu's pride and overconfidence persisted until his death, maintaining the flawed belief that victories were due to his personal combat skills, while defeats were the arrangement of the heavens. His heroic but overly stubborn spirit ultimately cost the young hero his life at the peak of his glory. His biased and narrow-minded self-esteem destroyed the great legacy of a hero. Selflessness, without hesitation, giving without expecting return. When making a sacrifice, one should not hesitate or weigh the pros and cons to the extent of being ashamed of the hesitation. Once you've extended kindness to others, do not expect anything in return as such expectations diminish the value of your charitable spirit. During the Tang Dynasty, the renowned general Tong Kang was appointed as the governor of Guangzhou. After a period of exceptional political achievements, he was promoted to prime minister. The officials and citizens of Guangzhou felt honored and prepared to erect a monument in his honor. However, when Tong Kang learned of the local people's intentions toward him, he was not pleased. Instead, he was deeply concerned. He petitioned the emperor, insisting on prohibiting such actions. He stated, I merely executed the duties assigned by the imperial court in Guangzhou without achieving any remarkable feats. Now, as I assume the role of prime minister, the local people's attempt to flatter me by erecting a monument represents a harmful tradition. To prevent such bad habits from taking root, please start by forbidding this act for me. The emperor agreed with Tong Kang's request and banned the locals from erecting the monument. Tong Kang lived a life of integrity, serving the people without any expectation of reward or personal gain. His honorable and pure life earned him widespread admiration and respect. 43. The Mysterious Ways of Fate The Futility of Cunning The concept of fate is indeed the most wondrous. 
What use is cleverness when the natural order of things has its own way of unfolding? Those who steadfastly maintain their principles without seeking reward often find themselves inadvertently guided by the hands of fate to fulfill their deepest desires. On the other hand, those who cunningly try to evade the consequences of their actions may find their intelligence stripped away in their flight, leaving them without the vitality to continue. Thus, it's clear that the cosmic order operates in profound and mysterious ways, guiding and influencing outcomes, rendering the intelligence of mere mortals insignificant in comparison. During the reign of Empress Wu Zetian, there was an official named Wei Yuanzhong, known for his loyalty and integrity, and his indifference toward sycophants. Unfortunately, he was falsely accused of plotting rebellion, leading to his imprisonment. The notorious official, Hu Junji, subjected him to severe torture to force a confession. Despite the brutal treatment, Wei Yuanzhong refused to admit guilt. Enraged, Hu Junji ordered that Wei's legs be lifted and dragged across the ground, causing his face to be severely lacerated. Yet, Wei Yuanzhong remained defiant, berating Hu Junji even more fiercely. In a fit of anger, Hu increased the torture, dragging Wei across rough terrain, leaving trails of blood. Wei sternly warned, The net of heaven has large meshes, but nothing escapes it. Your abuse of these cruel punishments will eventually lead to divine retribution. Left with no choice, Howe had to report to the court that there was no evidence to support the accusation of treason against Wei, leading to Wei being demoted and exiled far from the capital. Ultimately, Hu's cruel methods resulted in his own dismissal by Empress Wu Zetian. The old saying goes, Man's plans are inferior to those made by heaven. Is the small cunningness of individuals truly worthy of admiration? It's the upright character of individuals like Wei Yuanzhong that truly embodies brilliance and distinction. 44. Seeking Enlightenment Within, Rejecting External Rituals Embarking on a raft only to desire reaching the shore to abandon the raft epitomizes a person who truly grasps the essence of not being confined by material externalities. If one is already riding a donkey and yet seeks another, they will never ascend to the status of a high monk who can renounce worldly attachments. In the twelfth year of the Sui dynasty, a novice monk named Dao Xin, just fourteen years old, sought an audience with the third patriarch of Zen Buddhism, Sengkan, and requested, Please, Your Holiness, grant me the Buddhist way to liberation. Sengkan responded, who has bound you? Dao Xin replied, No one has bound me. Senkan then said, Then why seek liberation? This insight immediately enlightened Dao Xin. He followed and served Senkan for nine years, after which he took monastic vows in Jiaoko and devoted himself even more diligently to Senkan's care. Through various Zen teachings, Senkan realized Dao Xin's profound understanding and mature spiritual connection, eventually passing on the Dharma robe to him. Thus, Dao Xin became the fourth patriarch of Zen Buddhism. The irony lies in the human nature's quest for freedom while seeking liberation, becoming inadvertently bound by the concept of liberation itself without knowing how to truly free oneself.